Good afternoon. Good afternoon. How are you? Good. Very well. Thank you for inviting us. You know, it's yeah, I'm very happy to have you. And many thanks for accepting this invitation. It, this is uh, I don't remember the number, but it's been uh, quite a few teaching tidbits that we've been um, hosting uh, with uh, you know a variety of friends, colleagues from uh, Ostos and from other institutions as well. And it's been a, a very rewarding learning process to be able to have these conversations and also sharing those experiences that each of us are going through in this transition. And today is uh, not an exception. We have uh, two um, dear colleagues for that are working directly with our students from the Hostos Writing Center and also for the Hostos Academic Learning Center. And we're going to learn a little bit uh, more about themselves in a little bit. Um, I'm going to be you know, starting by asking you, if you can tell us a little bit about yourself, what you do, and also how you're feeling today. Let's start with uh, Amalia and then we go with Trump. Sure. My name is Amalia Wilson. I currently am the coordinator at the Hostos Academic Learning Center. Uh, my job entails supporting Professor Isabel Lee, our director in the running of the center, hiring tutors, overseeing tutors, making sure that we're offering the best touring services possible. Um, and I'm doing good. Everything has been so far uh, smooth. Uh, we're reassessing and trying to learn and grow within this remote learning um, new challenge that we have. Thank you. Let's welcome Trump. Yeah, so I'm Tram Nguyen. I'm a professor of English, and I recently took over the Writing Center, the directorship of the Writing Center. Uh, my mission has, has, has been to optimize and maximize our student outreach and to make sure that we provide students with the services that they need, with the help that they need. And I, for me, so much of tutoring is not simply um, telling students you can do this, that, and the other in order to receive an A. It really is a kind of close reading process where the tutor has to engage with a kind of an assessment of the student and their needs in order to actually perform um, the task well. And so my job is to make sure that that happens, to provide the support to tutors, uh, to provide training, and also to uh, train administrative staff. We've had a huge turnover. And so we, uh, I've created a whole new team. They are wonderful. And in this transition to the virtual writing center, they have been phenomenal in reaching out and providing both students and tutors with, um, with all kinds of support, all levels of support, not only academic, but it, um, emotional support, um, and also just uh, human, I think a human connection. And so that's the writing center. Excellent. Uh, you know, uh, I, I know for all of the work that you have been doing and also the, uh, the approaches that you have been taking, it was something that uh, we had to adapt really fast and identifying what would make sense. And if something didn't make sense, then, you know, how do we change? How do we adapt? And the amount of creativity that has gone in, uh, in your offices has been uh, great just to make sure that we continue to provide the, um, the services that we, that, that you do to, for our students. And you were, you mentioned a little bit about that, but I wanted to, you know, bring this first question to you about work and life. Those, those two were different before we were going to the physical campus and we had our personal space at home. This is something that is not necessarily true because we are at home and then we are combining these two spaces. So how, 
have your work and life responsibilities changed due to your, your transition? Let's go with Amalia and then uh, Trump. Yeah, so <laughs> you're absolutely right. Uh, it's hard to balance it sometimes because the same space becomes both your home and your workspace. But I think that what's important for me is to always remember that I am a human and that um, I need to step away from my duties when I need to, right? Uh, we have we we have very scheduled meetings throughout the day to always touch base. Um, but because our tutoring center does function on uh, appointments and making sure students are supported uh, technologically as well, uh, you know, we do have to be online. Our tutoring center does run from 10 to 9 p.m. So sometimes I do find myself checking my email and making sure that I'm helpful in any way possible. Uh, we are very lucky to have very supportive staff also with us. So some you know, we will break up the morning people from the evening people and alternate. Um, I have also found it very useful to take my weekend seriously. I think that when I was going on campus, I would be sometimes on my email in the weekends typing away. Uh, I think especially now during a global pandemic, it's extremely crucial to keep mindful of your mental health. And so on the weekends, I indulge in any type of entertainment that I find needed so that I can smile and remind myself that, you know, I still have the next weekend, to, the next week to go through. Uh, so that's pretty much how I'm doing it. But so far it's also good because I love what I do and it's not, it doesn't feel taxing at all emotionally. It just means that I keep helping people and that I, I feel good doing it. Thank you. Let's hear from Trump. You know, I've been thinking about this and um, grad school really prepared me for quarantine life because so much of grad school is <laughs> you're living your life in isolation. It's you and some books and your brain and you have to get you know control of your anxieties and your neuroses and you also have to build boundaries and you have to set those demarcations down for yourself. And I think that that's been really important in this in this lockdown. Uh, for me, I've been reading a lot um, Harrison Owen's idea of uh, open space and holding space. And so for me right now, there is uh, the urgency of thinking about our own, um, I think, blessings and the things that we've been graced with, which is, as Amalia says, um, this work that we do that's really important and the people that we serve who are incredibly important. And so the idea of holding space is a, a philosophy that um, Owen applies to the environment, but mm -hmm. it's, been, it's been adapted. And it's the idea of, of caring for and being present for others. And I think that in this moment, it's been really important to me um, in my work and in my personal life to hold space for people and to honor what it is that they need um, from me and from the writing center. And so I think that taking time to assess and to self-reflect on your, on what is it that you can give and also what is it that you need to do for yourself is really important. At every PD that we have had in the writing center, uh, we have always started out, we, we spend half an hour where we just do roll call and we, we ask each person, what's one thing um, that you're doing that's fun? And what's one thing that you really miss about not being together? Because ultimately I think that the the idea of community in Ostos Community College is really important for so many of our people. And the absence of that physical community is uh, troubling. It's, um, it's, I think, really um, a kind of loss that is momentous. And as a result, any opportunity that we can take to have connection and to build bonds is really important. And so for me, that's how um, I have 
I have worked in this space to uh, make it okay for myself and for others. In terms of my personal life, I think that the question is about work and life. Um, I think like Amalia, it's important to have those demarcations, the weekends, um, things that you do that are fun. I haven't done as much craft and you know artistic things as I would have liked. But as you know, Carlos, you pointed out, the transition has been um, urgent. It has been um, really quick, and there were lots of things to deal with. So um, I've encouraged other people to take up artistic or just any fun activity and I plan to do that for myself. Thank you and um, you know you've been mentioning a number of, of things about how you have been identifying balance in in this process because it is important to um, to be able to combine these two worlds and not be um, uh, stressed out and lose the, the, the control. Mm -hmm. But you, in your roles right now, you're doing administra administrative work. You work a lot with uh, mentors, tutors, and they are also in connection, constant connection with our students. How this whole new world of doing tutoring in the online setting has changed your approach and also, you know, your role as an administrator? I think that working in higher education requires a lot of commitment to the well-being of students in general, right? And I think it is crucial that we have the virtues of patience and taking it slow every day. Um, I think that one of the things I've learned throughout this remote learning process has been the importance of putting yourself always, always in the position of the student, right? Um, sometimes we tend to assume that things are clear and they're not, right? And we need to also keep in mind that our student body, especially at Hostos, comes from very different cultures, comes from very different backgrounds, socioeconomic backgrounds as well. So one of the things that uh, I've been struggling as an administrator is making sure that whatever I propose as ways that we uh, we can reach out to students is viable and that it is doable and it's easy. And, um, you know, rereading all the language, always making sure it's welcoming, always making sure that it's letting the students know that we're here, that we want to work with them, that we are welcoming them on to the virtual tutoring center. Um, I was actually just having this conversation four days ago with my team about how much I miss, you know, laughing with the students in the frown counter when I was with them and being like, Aman, come to tutoring, you know, let's get our lives together together. And um, they would always joke around and I would show them where the schedule was and there's this human touch, right? And unfortunately, it's harder to do it on virtual tutoring because sometimes we'll go in to help them connect, fix their audio or their camera and, you know, they'll be like, wait, who are you? I don't know who you are. And um, that's kind of the biggest challenge I've had as an administrator is like letting them know that I'm, I'm not just um, barging in on their tutoring session, I'm there to help them, right? Um, so I think that that was easier when I was on campus because I could, you know, greet them with a smile. And here it's kind of like, oh, I have to turn on my camera and I have to like make sure that I introduce myself and that I like I come, you know, it's all safe. Uh, so that's really just been the biggest challenge so far. Um. I'm Ali, I think you're absolutely right that um, seeing things through the eyes of students and for me tutors, because many of our tutors are pure, are pure tutors, meaning that they are also students, is really important. Um, and, and I've had to or I, just, I had decided that one way to do that was to actually take on some tutoring myself to see how the platforms that we were using worked for students. And I have to tell you a funny thing. I, I After one of these sessions, uh, the student wanted to book another appointment with me because she thought I was another student. And I was like, no, I'm sorry. But I'm an administrator and unfortunately, 
there's a lot of paperwork I have to do. So one of the challenges of being an administrator is the paperwork. I think that working with students is wonderful. Um, I think working with tutors is wonderful and working with coordinators is, is so lovely because everyone wants to help. Um, besides the paperwork, I have to really work at telling my team to stop working, uh, to in fact practice, you know, work like boundaries for themselves. And so I think so much of so much of my time is spent um, making sure that people are okay and that 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 runs along the lines of, you know, do you understand how this works? Can you make this session happen? Can you respond to students effectively? Uh, can students access our, our platform or do they have the right information? You know, and, and, and the HAP team has been phenomenal in always forwarding the information or queries that come their way that should be sent to the writing center. And so there are those challenges, but as Amalia points out, it's really uh, rewarding to be able to work with people who care so much about students and about the people they work with. And so um, the move, the, the challenge was that the move created disconnection and so much information from people and addressing that has been the major challenge. Um, we, we, we go on. I think, I think creative problem solving is important in this moment. And so that's what we've been striving at. Thank you. And um, yeah, the fact that, uh, that you mentioned, and this has been a common denominator at our institution, that people love what they do. And that makes a huge difference in, in being committed, the be the also that you're able to identify if there is a problem, like you mentioned, problem solving is key, and then coming up with a solution, thinking outside the box sometimes, to be able to provide the uh, the support and also caring about, as you mentioned, uh, what's going on in in the other side of the of the screen, and. Um, as, I, as you were mentioning, you've been having conversations, you've been trying to push your staff not to work too much. Are there any other challenges that they have shared with you, you know, the tutors or the students that have been working with students that uh, about, you know, this whole transition and how they are perceiving online tutoring as well? Yeah, I mean, I think that, the challenge is, is, it's the circumstance itself, you know, like the fact that we are in a pandemic, the fact that it is a global pandemic, the fact that we can't go out, uh, we can't, you know, live our lives as normal. Um, I think that what I've noticed a lot is the fact that this has taken a toll on the well being of our tutors and of our students. Um, and that's why I think it's extremely important to always check in with your staff. So, you know, Professor Lee and I like to go in through different sessions that are going on with our tutors if they don't have a student and we'll stay with them and we'll talk with them for like 30 minutes. How's life? How are you doing? How are you feeling? How can we support you? Um, and we also take that with us as we deal with students, you know, um, we always encourage our tutors to, you know, be resourceful. If they can send information to a student, um, please feel free. Uh, I think that it's important to always remember that we're all humans and that this pandemic has not been easy on us. Um, and I think that the challenge, like I said, is really just always communicating with each other and letting each other know where we stand. Um, uh, so overall, that has been kind of where we are, is always remembering that we are humans and that sometimes the tutor might not log on on time, but, you know, maybe they had a hard time sleeping last night because they had anxiety or whatever that case. So uh, that has really been one of the things that we are always having to rem remind ourselves about. Here, let, let's hear from I think that there are so many challenges for tutors and students. Um, some of them are living in shelters. 
so internet access is impossible, near impossible. Um, many of them have children, and so they are trying to homeschool as well as do their own schooling as well as work. Um, and so they communicated to me that because they're home, it's wonderful because they get to spend more time with their children, but their children don't realize that or don't understand that uh, mom or dad has to work now or mom and dad or mom and dad has to uh, do classwork now. Um, and, you know, I'm sure you've heard stories of students and tutors who have had loss, who yeah. have um, come into direct contact with COVID-19. And so there's a terrible amount of grief out uh, there. And um, I think that to get through this, there has to be a space of gentleness for people. And there has to be a, the work of, of encouraging people to be kind to themselves, to say, it's okay, you're doing great. That thing that you did that you thought wasn't good enough, you did it. Um, we have a wonderful social media uh, web manager person right now, and she is continually posting um, sayings to the effect of, you know, done is better than perfect. And right now, that's all we can strive for. Done is better than perfect. Uh, I tell the funny story of how, you guys, I hate exercising. And <laughs> after, you know, after 30, you can't have French fries for dinner anymore. And after 40, you can't, it's, food restrictions aren't good enough. You actually have to start exercising. But I really hate it. And so I jogging and I really, really hate it. But I force myself to do it. I only do eight minutes and I'm so proud of myself. And I tell this to everyone because it sounds ridiculous that I'm jogging for eight minutes. But this is what I'm doing for self-care and I'm gonna applaud myself. And as a result, you know, everyone I've told this to tells me that's fantastic. So I think that that space of gentleness and kindness um, is really important to help people overcome the challenges which are innumerable. I, I'm so lucky to be able to um, continue on with my job, to have a space to live, um, to not have you know, um, sick family members that I have to care for. And so I think that anything that we can do to support people who are going through innumerable obstacles is really important as a medicine. Thank you. And um, it's kind of interesting of, uh, you know, as you said, the fact that you're doing some exercise and you're keeping consistency on doing that is is important. And uh, I've been saying to people that after all of these episodes, I've been getting running, 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 jogging, 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 that I, I it's pushing me and motivating me to to do it as well. So it's gonna get it's gonna get to it. Uh, I do some exercises, but then I need to do more. And <laughs> you have the time. <laughs> so, you know, this is, you know, part of the uh, the uh, motivations in, in, you know, having this type of conversations and being able to, yeah. you know, see. Eight minutes, Carlos. You just have to think. It's just eight minutes. I, I can grit my teeth and bear it. <laughs> and we have uh, uh, one of our friends who are, are um joining us through uh through social media bob jump saying good job a little every day and uh you know it is important you know think about rocky if you're running and then you that's yeah, so we want to thank you bob and and everybody who has is is tuned in and uh if you have questions for our guests please uh type them in in social media we were talking a bit a little bit about how you're dealing with stress and then you know a lot of people are going through different things 
any additional tips that you want to share about reducing stress and anxiety, something that has worked for you? Yeah. Uh, I like essential oils a lot. They're so great. Uh, take some deep breaths. Uh, I'm not much of a runner. <laughs> That's kind of not my thing. Uh, I'm, but I am an artist. So I have been indulging in oil pastels and painting and like also redoing my home for some reason that brings me like a lot of like calmness i think that it's the idea anything that i can control i want to do because i know i can't control the pandemic right so practically like yeah anything i can control and it's important to laugh so i definitely encourage everyone to like hold zoom meetings with their friends find reasons to laugh you know read a good book have a conversation with whoever you're quarantining with if you have someone in the same home with you um i think it's a good time to just do a lot of self-reflection and find the good moments in in everything trump i cook and then i eat it <laughs> and then i have to go for my eight minute run so this is, I find cooking very de-stressing. Yeah. Uh, but I liked what Amalia said about um, artistic, you know, endeavors, really important, anything. I had tutors talk about how they were teaching themselves to play piano, how they were teaching themselves to paint or to play guitar. And so, uh, but you know, you all, you don't have to hold yourself up to high level as anything. You can if you're teaching yourself music, you can just be learning the basic chords. And so I think that doing anything to take your mind off of um, all of the loss up there is, is fantastic. Great. And uh, it's true, you know, identify something that, uh, that you like or you are intrigued for and just go for it. No, and sometimes I try to do some physical work. I was doing gardening over the weekend, and then I had my whole body hurting for the for a whole week. But you know, it was uh, a mental re relief and, and distress. And uh, I hope that the 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 end result looks looks good. We'll see. What did you plant? I find a lot of seeds of everything tomato pepper all types of pepper letters That's so yeah we'll see and <laughs> i could do, I could do a, an ecuadorian ceviche once i get all of that yeah <laughs> my last question for you we know that this is not over yet but uh a lot has been learned and then we will be learning a lot more as we have some time to even process everything that has happened. But so far, what takeaways has this transition left you with? Uh, I think this transition has left me with the importance of learning and always being open to growth and just always being ready to take on a new adventure. You know, I think that we did not see this coming. I when, you know, when the when coronavirus hit New York City, we were all like, okay, but is it going to spread? And then, you know, we were like, oh, it's happening. And then once we were told like we could not come back to campus, we were like, officially, this is this is on, right? Um, and it was exciting for me because I was like, okay, so now everything I do, I get to do from home, but now I have to figure out how the services we offer, which is very personable, can still remain with that human touch, but virtually, right? Um, so it definitely left me with this, this genuine, genuine um, feeling of always wanting to keep growing and always wanting to learn. Uh, we're taking different webinars every time we can to like continue to see what's out there, how we can train our tutors to be ready for everything. Um, we're looking forward to continuing to be virtual even when we go on campus. Um, because we think it's important. We need to be accessible. We need to be ready. Um, and so, yeah. Thank you. Let's hear from uh, Trump. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, on the same line, uh, we had also, the Writing Center had also been uh, in the process of 
delivering online tutoring to students. So um, I think it is important to continue offering that to and to, to offer different variations on the service. Uh, sometimes our tutors aren't able to do online tutoring. So I think even a phone call is wonderful because um, some of my uh, admins or on the phone with students for half an hour, an hour at a time, because students just need someone to walk them through something and to hear a uh, human voice is really important. My takeaway is that people are incredibly resilient. I cannot believe how resilient people are and how compassionate people are. And so it's, I, it's been phenomenal to discover that uh, and to see it in action. So I don't know, I, I, that, you know, you asked really hard questions, Carlos. I need more time to think about this one. <laughs> you know, it's, it's part of the, uh, you know, the self-reflection because these are the things that I, it's been very busy and there, there has been thing, one thing coming after the other and we haven't been able to to think about and and for me this is an also an, an opportunity because I'm as as a mask I uh, I ask this question and as you're you know reflecting upon it you know my my reflection also goes in there like what how many or how I don't know whether we we have been seeing the uh, the benefit and as you said you know resiliency has been uh, uh, you know key word in how we see people continuing doing what they do because of the love to their profession and also for the uh, you know the connection that we have with the mission of our institution in supporting our students and um and i think it is is going to be helping us to even as you said you know you're already thinking that you know virtual tutoring was not that bad as we could have taught before and then how much of those benefits could be combined with this new norm. And um, as my job in promoting technology adoption, you know, it's it's great to hear, but at the same time, it's identifying the purpose of why we're doing this is, is, is very important. And um, let me just share one of our friends who have been uh, following this series, Pancho Gomez, I'm so glad to hear. Thank you for all of the valuable information. And to you guests, our best wishes. Uh, for Bob, who has been uh, commenting and sharing with us, thank you for the dedication, for your dedication. And, you know, it's been uh, in a great conversation that we had, and I hope that everybody that have has been connected and will be watching this video, um, would be benefiting from these conversations and that uh, we are continue to do what we do, do what we love. And also for everybody to know that, you know, there's everybody that is behind the, uh, the scenes, everybody that is working uh, hard, very hard to make sure that our students continue to get the support. There's gonna be tutoring, we're gonna have tutoring also for the summer courses, you're working, preparing for that. And so we want to let uh, our students know that this is happening and that you continue uh, innovating and identifying ways of having that connection with our students. With that, I want to thank uh, Amalia and Tran for joining me and I uh, hope that um, you have a great afternoon. Thank you very much. Thank you for having us.